it is finally time to announce Slayer Fest 2024. Hi Bookish Besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. I am so beyond excited to be announcing the next round of my Slayer Fest readathon. If you are new here, if you're not familiar, this is a month-long readathon I created based on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I have made quite a few changes to this round of the readathon in order to make it a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting, and in some ways, a little bit more challenging as well. Now, I wanna give a quick caveat here that you do not need to know anything about Buffy the Vampire Slayer in order to participate in this readathon. However, this round of Slayer Fest is going to be completely based on season one of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I'll get into more of that in just a second. But there will be some spoilers for season one contained throughout the readathon because as I drop the prompts during the month, I'm going to be basically telling the overall story arc for season one, and there will be spoilers for that story arc within the context for the prompts. So if you have plans on watching Buffy in the future and you do not want to be spoiled at all, my main recommendation of course is going to be go and watch season one of Buffy. It's only 12 episodes. You have plenty of time to do this. However, you will be able to avoid spoilers just because the prompts themselves are not going to be spoilery. It's just going to be the story leading into the prompt, if that makes sense. So do not worry if you have plans for watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer and you don't want to be spoiled. You can still absolutely participate in this readathon. So I just wanted to let you know that you can absolutely participate in this if you are not a Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan at all. It is just meant to be a fun, good time. And I think you can still enjoy it without having seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Although, if you have watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you're going to get a lot of the references here and it might make it that much more enjoyable for you. Now, before I get into all the details of the readathon, I wanted to quickly extend a huge thank you to Aoife from Pretty Purple Polka Dots and Jess from the Hex Library for volunteering to be moderators for this readathon. So you're going to have me as the main host and then them as the two moderators. And then in the future, depending on how this goes, I might have individual hosts for each team like you're seeing with some of the readathons that are going on nowadays. So once again, thank you so much to Aoife and Jess for helping me out with this readathon. And I do want to give a big shout out to Brie from Four Paws in a Book. She was the creator of the amazing readathon and she has so graciously been answering my questions and helping me sort out some details for this readathon before it goes live. So I am eternally grateful to these ladies and of course I will have their channels linked down below if you have not already checked them out. So now that that's all out of the way let's go ahead and talk about the readathon, how it's going to work, and all the details. So as I mentioned this round of Slayer Fest is going to look very different from other rounds. Probably the main difference that I made is that this is going to be a team-based readathon. These are increasing in popularity and and I really like the idea of incorporating that into Slayer Fest. So you will have the option to join one of five teams and I will get into all the details of the teams later on. Now I will say that this time Slayer Fest is going to have a Discord channel. It's going to be linked in the description and it is going to be mandatory for you to join the Discord because that is where all the prompts are going to be dropped. That's where you're going to have an opportunity to collaborate with your team and so on. Because yes, this is going to be traditionally competitive and that you are racing against the opposite teams for a specific purpose. The ultimate objective of this round of Slayer Fest is going to be to beat the big bad of the readathon. And since we're basing this readathon around season one, the big bad is going to be the master. And so ultimately you and your team are going to work together to build enough points to beat the master. And you wanna beat the master before any other team does because there are going to be special rewards that come along with that. So it is going to be traditionally competitive in that way, but it's also going to be a little bit collaborative because throughout the readathon, I plan on throwing out some additional challenges and activities here and there. And you and your teammates are going to have to decide whether to partake in those activities activities and challenges to raise your points or potentially take any punishments that come along with not participating in them. So it will be both competitive with the other teams and collaborative with your teammates. And in order to do all this, you are going to need to take part in the Discord. And as I mentioned, the ultimate objective is going to be to defeat the master. There is going to be a specific point count associated with the master and you and your team are going to have to build enough points to defeat him. Now, full transparency, I have not made a decision yet on how many points the master is going to be worth just because I needed to gauge and see how many participants were going to join this readathon because because I didn't want to make it an astronomically high amount and not have enough participants available to be able to meet that amount, if that makes sense. So you will know how many points the master is worth by the very first day of the readathon. And of course, points correlate to page count. And for simplicity's sake, one page count is going to equal one point. Now the point amount to defeat the master is going to be the same for every single team. However, it's all going to be averaged out. So do not worry if you are on a smaller team. Don't worry that you are going to be at a disadvantage because you are not. In fact, you might actually be at an advantage overall because those larger teams, they're 
they're going to have their points divided by a larger number of teammates. So it might actually be harder for them to reach the ultimate goal. Now I will say, I'll give you a little hint here that with each new round of Slayer Fest, the big bads are going to get harder and harder and harder to kill and their point count is going to raise. And on that note, the reason why you are trying to beat every other team to defeat the big bad is because the first team to defeat the big bad is going to have rewards going into the next round of Slayer Fest. Now, if you and your team collectively read enough to raise enough points to beat the master, but you are not in first place, you would basically just be going into the next round of Slayer Fest with a clean slate. No reward, but no disadvantage either. So essentially, as long as you and your team are building enough points to defeat the master for this round of Slayer Fest, there really are no losers overall. So that's an overall view of what Slayer Fest is going to look like and what the ultimate objective of the readathon is going to look like. So now let's go ahead and get into the teams. There are going to be five teams that you can choose from. You can choose to be a Slayer, a Witch, a Watcher, a Vampire, or a Werewolf. And before you are welcomed on the team of your choice, you are going to have to read a book correlating to the prompt that is associated with your team. And I will get into that in just a minute. You are also going to have the opportunity to select a weapon. And this weapon is going to give you a one-time use reward that you can use at any point throughout the readathon. And there's going to be a prompt associated with each weapon as well. So the prompt associated with your team and the weapon are going to be the only two prompts that you know ahead of the start of the readathon. The main prompts are going to drop throughout the month. Now on that note, I am allowing people to start working on those two prompts ahead of the start of Slayer Fest so that by September 1st, which is when the readathon starts, by the way, I don't know if I said that. This readathon is running from September 1st through September 30th. I guess that probably would have been helpful to know. As you can tell, I obviously have my stuff together. So yes, prior to the start of Slayer Fest on September 1st, you are totally allowed to have read the book associated with your team and your weapon. Each team will also come with four distinct bonus points and you can use that with the books that you were reading to kind of build up the points for your team. So let's go ahead and dive into the details of the team. First, let's talk about Slayers. If you are a Slayer, chances are you are a very strong, stubborn individual who typically carries the weight of the world on your shoulders. You are a protector, a fighter, and you are willing to do or sacrifice anything to help the people that you love. You have a very strong sense of duty and you are concerned with doing what is right, not necessarily what is legal. If you wish to join the Slayers, you are going to have to read a romance or a fantasy romance. And these are going to be the four bonus points associated with Team Slayer. You are going to receive an additional 50 points for every book that features a badass female protagonist. You are going to receive an additional 25 points for every book that you choose that has a mostly black cover. You will receive an additional 15 bonus points for every book that has a weapon on the cover or in the title. And you will receive an additional 10 points for any additional book that you read that is within your team's genre. So let's say you decide to pick up a book that has a badass female protagonist, that has a mostly black cover, and is a fantasy romance or a romance. That would allow you to add an additional 85 points onto the page count for that book, if that makes sense. And yes, the books that you read to secure your team and your weapon will apply to your team's overall point count. There will be a book submission form that you can use to submit these reads ahead of the start of the readathon. So do not worry, those points are not going to go to waste. Now let's go ahead and talk about Team Witch. If you are a witch, you likely have a deeper connection to nature and the natural world. Plants, animals, what have you, you care for them deeply and you are able to use the natural world to your benefit, assuming that you do not take advantage and assuming that it's for pure purposes. You're likely a spiritual, compassionate, and empathetic person, always willing to help your friends, but you are also fiercely protective of them as well. If you choose Team Witch, you are going to need to read a fantasy or a magical realism book. So yes, please take note that I am drawing a distinct line between a fantasy romance and a fantasy that could potentially have a slight romantic subplot. If you are not sure about what the book you plan to read is going to count as, there will be a does this count thread in the discord where you can kind of post that. Does this count as a fantasy or a fantasy romance? If you choose Team Witch, you are going to earn 50 bonus points for every book you read that features an LGBTQIA plus character or is written by an LGBTQIA plus author. You will also earn an additional 25 bonus points for reading a book that has a mostly purple cover. You will earn an additional 15 bonus points for reading a book with natural elements on the cover or in the title. So that could be stars, plants, trees, animals. I am counting animals in this as well. So if there's a cat on the cover, you can count that as a natural element. And again, you will earn an additional 10 bonus points for reading in your team's genre. That is the only bonus prompt that is going to remain the same for each and every team. Now let's go ahead and talk about team watcher. If you are a watcher, you are the studious scholarly type. You love to learn and you are somebody who values knowledge above most other traits and you prefer to research something thoroughly before you make a decision. You are not one to jump into anything impulsively. You support the Slayers and the other members of the Scooby gang with your insight and your wisdom. If you would like to be a part of Team Watcher, you are going to have to read a historical or a nonfiction with the exclusion of true crime. True crime will not count towards the Watcher category. If you join Team Watcher, you are going to earn 50 bonus points for every book you read that has BIPOC representation, again, either as a character or is written by 
a BIPOC author. You will earn an additional 25 bonus points for reading a book that contains either a mostly gray, white, or silver color. I wanted to incorporate all of these as one as I know that sometimes it can be difficult to distinguish like silver and gray. So I wanted to give you the option of white, silver, and gray for this. You will receive an additional 15 bonus points for reading a book that is mostly text on the cover. So there are very few additional details on the cover aside from the text. And of course you will also receive 10 bonus genre points for reading a book within your team's genre. Moving on into the vampires. If you are a vampire, you are typically drawn to the dark and the dangerous. You thrive in the darkness and shy away from the light. You prefer to be on your own, away from others, solitary overall, but you do have a select few that you care about. You are incredibly strong, fast, and yes, even deadly. If you want to be a part of Team Vampire, you are going to need to read a book that is either a thriller, mystery, horror, suspense, or true crime. I am putting true crime into this category, so true crime will count towards the vampire team. If you join Team Vampire, you are going to earn 50 additional bonus points for every book you read that features a crime other than murder. It can have murder in the book, but it also has to contain some other type of crime, such as burglary or things like that. You will receive an additional 25 bonus points for reading a book with a mostly red cover. You will receive an additional 15 bonus points for reading a book with a body part in the title or on the cover. A full person does not count. It has to be an actual body part. And of course, you will receive the same 10 points for a genre bonus. And last but not least, let's go ahead and talk about the werewolves. If you are a werewolf, you can sometimes be a study in contradictions because you pride yourself on being different from others, yet at the same time, you require a solid pack for survival. You have one face that you show the world, but one face that you hide away. You are very much controlled and influenced by the weather and the moon cycles. And sometimes you are not able to control your most base impulses and urges, which can get you into trouble. You may often be or come across as possessive, territorial, and hot-tempered, but you are extremely loyal. If you would like to be a part of Team Werewolf, you are going to need to read a sci-fi, dystopian, or paranormal story. If you are on Team Werewolf, you are going to receive 50 bonus points for every single book that you read that features transfiguration, shape-shifting, or some type of mythological creature. You will receive an additional 25 bonus points for reading a book that has a mostly blue cover. You will receive an additional 15 bonus points for reading a book that has a cover that is illustrated, drawn, painted, etc. And then of course the 10 bonus points for reading within your team's genre. So those are the five teams, the prompt that you need to satisfy in order to join those teams, as well as the bonus prompts that you are going to be able to read throughout the month in order to add points to every single book that you read. How you determine what team you want to be on is completely up to you. Maybe you just have a thing for vampires and you want to join the vampire team. Maybe you love the bonus prompts for the witch team most of all, and you think that you could satisfy a lot of them more easily than some of the other teams. However you choose your team is completely up to you. Now let's go ahead and talk about the weapons. As I mentioned, you are going to have the opportunity to select a weapon of your choice. Each weapon you are going to be able to use one time for a one time bonus reward. There are five weapons that you can choose from. First, we have the scythe. And in order to wield the scythe, you have to read one of the highest rated books on your TBR. If you do this, you are going to be able to skip one prompt entirely while still claiming a flat 300 points for your team. So say during one of the prompt drops, there's a prompt that you really don't like, or you really don't have anything on your TBR that you're going to be able to satisfy it easily with. Maybe it's a little bit of a hardship in order to try to satisfy this prompt. You can skip that prompt entirely, but still get points for your team. You're not going to be able to get any bonus points for your team, but at least you're not getting zero points. Next, we have the classic, the stake. And this time, in order to wield the stake, you have to read one of the lowest rated books on your TBR. This weapon will allow you to completely mood read one time for a prompt. So say a prompt drops and you're really not feeling it and you want to read basically anything you want to read, you can do that. And of course, you can attach any of the bonus prompts if applicable. So like the first one, which you don't have to read anything for and you'll still get some points, this allows you to read whatever you want. You don't have to satisfy the prompt at all. And you could basically earn as many points as you want to, depending on the page count and the bonus points that you choose to satisfy. Next, we have the crossbow. And in order to wield this, you need to read a book that was recommended to you by a friend. If you do this, this is going to allow you one time to steal the bonus prompt for another team. Essentially, you can mix and match them to your heart's content. So this could definitely be something that you can have a lot of fun playing around with because maybe you can find a book that satisfies five, six, seven, eight bonus prompts if you really want to take the time to think about it. And that could be a really great way to maximize the points for your reading that round. Next, we have the dagger. And for this, you are going to have to read the shortest book on your TBR. And wielding the dagger allows you to use one book for two main prompts. So say one of the prompts have dropped, you read a book for it. And a little bit later down the line, another prompt drops that that same book would satisfy. If you have chosen the dagger, you can use that same book for that prompt. So you would be able to earn essentially the same page count for both of those prompts. And then the final weapon is the rocket launcher. And in order to wield this, you need to read a book that intimidates you. And you can interpret this however you want. Maybe it's a large book that you've been putting off because it is so big and you're nervous to read it. Or maybe it's just a book 
that is a little bit outside of your comfort zone and you're not sure if you're going to like it so you've been putting it off. Or if you're like me, maybe you have a book that's come out by one of your favorite authors and you are nervous that the book is not going to live up to your expectations. So you can, like I said, interpret this however you want to. And if you decide to satisfy this and wield the rocket launcher, you are going to be able to double the points for one read. This is another one that can be very, very strategic. So say for one of the prompts, you read a pretty chunky book. Maybe it's about 500 pages. Maybe you also have some bonus points that are associated with that. And then you can double that for maximum points. So you are going to be able to choose one of these weapons. You just have to satisfy the prompt associated with the weapon, and then you will be able to wield it one time during the readathon. And just in case I haven't made it clear, you must read two different books to satisfy your team prompt as well as your weapon prompt. You cannot read one book to satisfy both of them. But again, you have the opportunity to read both your weapon and your team prompt well before the start of the readathon, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to go ahead and make this announcement video as early as possible. Now, for those who believe that they are going to need to read more than the 12 books, so the two prompts for the weapon and the team, and then the 10 main prompts, I have what I'm calling sidekick prompts. Just like the good loyal sidekicks that the Scooby gang has, like our lovely Xander, these sidekick prompts are going to be there to help raise the point count and strength of your team. There are five levels for the sidekick prompts, and there are five prompts within each level, and you are able to mix and match these ones as well. I will go ahead and clarify that these sidekick prompts can only be done after you have satisfied the main prompt. But like I said, you can mix and match and you can satisfy these multiple times over and over and over. I do not care how many times you satisfy these prompts. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly go through all the point levels and the five prompts within them. But all of this will be listed in the readathon FAQ document, which is also going to be linked down below. So for an additional 25 points, you can read a book with one of the five W's in the title, who, what, when, where, why, read a potential unhaul. So maybe there's a book that's been lingering on your shelves that you've been eyeing and have been questioning whether or not you want to keep. Go ahead and give that one a try. If you make it at least 51% of the way through that book, you will be able to count it for that readathon. So DNFs will count, assuming that you have read 51% of the book. Next, read a book with a two word title beginning with the, read a book between two and 300 pages and read a book that was published this year. So 2024. Next we have 50 points. For this, you can read a favorite book from one of your favorite booktubers. You can start a new series. So read the first book in a new series. Read a book between 300 and 400 pages. Read a TBR veteran. So a book that's been lingering for quite some time on your TBR. Or use a random number generator to select your read. For 75 points, you need to read a book that is set primarily on a plane, train, boat, or in a car for like a road trip scenario. You can read a Goodreads choice winner or nominee. Read a book between 400 and 500 pages. A book with a pronoun in the title. Or a book that that is published in the year corresponding with your Chinese zodiac. So for example, I'm a dragon. I was born in 1988. So that means I could read a book published in 1988, 2000, 2012, or 2024. So if you are a dragon like me and you read a 2024 release, this would actually satisfy two separate bonus prompts of reading a book that was published this year in 2024 and a book correlating to your Chinese zodiac. Next, moving on into the 100 point level, read a book about books. Read a book by an author with the same initials as you. And you can kind of interpret this however you want. It could be the first name and middle initial. It could be the first and last initial, however you want to do that, as long as there are initials that match your own within the author's name. Read a book with alliteration in the title. Read a book that features mental illness, mental health, or neurodivergent representation. Or read one of your favorite booktubers' least favorite books from 2023. And then finally, we have the 200 point level. You can read a book from the Rory Gilmore book challenge, read a book that you have previously DNF, like maybe a soft DNF or read a book from an author that you really haven't enjoyed in the past, but maybe one of their other books is of interest to you and you want to give them a shot. Read a book with a palindromic title or author name. So for example, Kristen Hanna, Hanna is a palindrome. It's spelled the same way, both front and back. Read a book that is told in non chronological order and read the final book in a series. So finish the series in order to reach the 200 level sidekick prompt. All right, everybody. So that that is essentially an overview of how this readathon is going to work. Down below in the description, you are going to find a link to the Discord to join, as well as a registration form. On the registration form, you are going to be asked to select your team and your weapon. Once you join the Discord, there's also going to be a channel in there for you to select your team. And it's very important that you do this because that's going to assign you the role that accesses your team chat. You can immediately start working on the reads associated with the team and the weapon. And then on the very first day in September, the first main prompt is going to drop for the readathon. 
fun. Now, for the most part, at the end of every single prompt, I'm not really going to be announcing the team's standing. You will know here and there where your team is standing overall in the ranking, so you'll have a good idea. But for the most part, there's not going to be any punishments or rewards. There's not going to be a winner or loser for each prompt that drops. Now, I'm not quite done. I have one additional thing that I want to announce, and it's something that I'm super excited about. It's kind of like a fun little side quest, and that is going to be Big Bad Bingo. It's going to feature some of the biggest, baddest villains of the Slayerverse. Now, the Big Bad Bad bingo is not actually something that I am limiting to the month of the readathon and the reason is is because I want as many people to be able to participate as possible and trying to have you complete the big bad bingo while also completing the readathon is just going to be a lot. Now I know that some people can do it but I want to give more people an opportunity to participate. Now you do not have to participate in the readathon in order to play big bad bingo however you will not be eligible to win the giveaway associated with big bad bingo unless you are taking part in the readathon if that makes sense. So essentially for every bingo that you earn you will be given one entry into a giveaway that will occur at the end of the time period for the Big Bad Bingo. If you manage to do a blackout on the bingo board, you will earn 10 entries into the giveaway. Now, a couple of caveats here. You cannot use a book that you are using for the readathon for the Big Bad Bingo. And similarly, you cannot double up on Big Bad Bingo prompts with the same book. So one book for each Big Bad prompt. I'm actually very, very excited about the Big Bad Bingo. I think it's going to add just like a fun little side quest to the readathon. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing who participates in it. In the Discord, there is going to be a specific channel dedicated to the bingo where you are going to be able to share every single time you get a bingo or a blackout and you are going to be able to share the books that you use to satisfy the prompts, etc. And like I said, every single time you do that, you will be given an entry into a giveaway and I will announce the winners of those giveaways at the end of the period in which I'm using for the Big Bad Bingo. But like I said, down below, there's going to be a link to a readathon document that's going to go over all of the rules for the readathon, all of the bonuses, all of the sidekick prompts, etc. And there's also going to be an FA FAQ document. Now, because this is the first time that I'm running the readathon this way, the FAQ document is a little bit sparse right now just because I'm going to be adding to it as I get more questions. But here are some that I could potentially be asked. Some of these I have already covered within the content of this video, but just in case, do I have to join the Discord? Yes. You're not going to be able to fully participate in this readathon or the Big Bad Bingo without joining the Discord. What happens if you DNF a book? If you manage to read 51% of the book, you will get to count the pages that you've read towards the readathon and you will also be able to apply any applicable bonuses as well so you're not going to lose out on that book. What counts as a book? Essentially if you can find it on Goodreads or Storygraph you're going to be able to count that. I am going to say that the minimum page count for a book is going to be 50 pages. So you cannot read a short story that's like 10 or 15 pages and count it for the readathon. Do audiobooks count? 100%. I'm primarily only going to be listening to audiobooks during the time of this readathon. What you'll have to do is go to either Goodreads or Storygraph and find the page count that they list for the book in question. All I ask is that you be consistent about it. So if you use Goodreads for one book stick with Goodreads for the page count because sometimes those page numbers can be a little bit inconsistent but you can add to the consistency of it by using the same site for that information. Now if you are listening to an audiobook like an Audible original that does not actually have a physical counterpart the general rule is that one hour of listening equals 40 pages so if you have a two hour long audiobook that's probably going to be about 80 pages but audiobooks 100% count. And can you use one book to satisfy multiple prompts? You cannot use one book to satisfy multiple prompts for the main prompts or the team prompt or the weapon prompt unless of course during the main prompts you have selected the weapon that allows you to do the double up one time. Otherwise all of those books must be completely separate. You can satisfy multiple sidekick prompts with just one book because you can mix and match. You can use something from the 25 point level, the 75 point level, the 200 point level all for one book. It doesn't have to be just one book for one point level and you can satisfy those prompts as many times as you want. All right everybody I think that's it. I have covered just about everything that I could possibly think about covering although I'm sure that I've missed quite a bunch but if you have any additional questions there is of course going to be an FAQ channel in the Discord, please feel free to pop your questions there and either myself, Aoife, or Jess will be happy to assist you with any of those questions. I am so beyond excited to be bringing this back again and I really hope to see a lot of you there. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.